You know, sometimes in life, you just get that feeling. You just know. In fact, I know already that without even trying these golf clubs in today's video, they are likely to be the best selling irons of 2023. You see, some clubs have mass appeal and these irons from Ping are the epitome of everything that they do so well. And what they do is, well, first of all, they produce a product that always appeals visually to the masses. They always then concentrate on forgiveness, which appeals to the masses. And then they pitch them in at a price point, well, that's at least deemed acceptable. And normally they will make product that exceeds the performance of their predecessor. That's also quite key. And unlike many other manufacturers out there, will ping cycle in terms of product release generally tends to be at least every two years. So at least from their point of view, their perspective, they are at least seeing some kind of enhancement in terms of technology before they bring a new product to market. And I reckon that could be the case in today's iron video. Well, let me introduce you to what I believe quite possibly will be the best selling iron of 2023. And that's really before I've collected any data, before I've given you any sort of feedback in terms of performance, I just get the feeling that Ping do this thing so well, and that is build a very versatile, very forgiving, very user-friendly set of irons that this thing will fly off the shelves. But what I wanna know is this, has there really been a significant change from G425s? Will we see any different that suggests this has justification in being the best-selling iron? of 2023, only one way to find out. Now, one of the major issues that I had with pretty much the whole G425 lineup, and that includes irons through to driver, was their sound and feel. I always felt that ultimately that is what let them down. Their performance, their forgiveness, everything else was really, really good, but they didn't sound too good. So one of the things I'll be paying particularly atten particular attention to is have they resolved that issue because depending on which order these videos come out, I can tell you that in the fairway woods, drivers and hybrids, they've achieved that. Have they done it in the iron? And I'll reveal my opinion on that very, very shortly. Before we get to that, let's talk about aesthetics, just how good do these things look? I've seen some reviews take place early part of, or late part of 2022 when these were released in Australia. I read a lot of comments and I think there's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of feeling in terms of how these look. But for me, I think it's a real good looking iron. It is in that game improvement category. And I think they've made a very modern styling into a club. It's also very different and very unique in the way it looks. It's obviously got that classic ping footprint in terms of what we've seen in back from G400s through to G425s. It's a cavity back, quite a deep cavity that you see. But overall, I think it's got a pleasing aesthetic. I just wanted to have a look at the G425 alongside it because I paired these up earlier on this morning and I think they've refined the shape in the G430 and that's sort of the height of the club. It certainly seems a little bit more compact. Heel to toe is similar, but overall, from a visual perspective, I just think the whole thing has been a little bit refined and then you put these down at a dress and the one thing that I'm picking up on is there's a little less offset, at least visually. They've done all the clever things by chamfering off edges in terms of on that sole unit and onto the top line, which give that visual perception that things are a little bit smaller than perhaps they actually are. But either way, this kind of boldly, unashamedly sits in that game improvement iron category. They're relatively strong lofted, although you always get those option of traditional uh, retro loft or power spec lofts that Ping will offer. But as they stand, quite a strong lofted iron. I'm expecting plenty of forgiveness. I'm expecting to see plenty of high launching balls. I'm expecting to see perhaps a dip in spin. These are all the things I'm expecting. Question is, what will this thing do? Let's start off by hitting a seven iron, collect some data, and I'll give you my immediate feedback. Right, there's no need to switch any camera angles. Let's just get straight stuck in and I will see how my performance is this morning. Starting off with a seven iron, I've got a five and a nine iron, but I'll also hit some balls. Here we go. 
but I'll also be picking up on the sound as we go. I mean, the one thing that first ball did was launch extremely high. What does it do in terms of performance? Okay, so a 167 carry um, was the first number I'd gone to. Oof, really low spin number, 3624. Launched extremely high, 23.6 degrees. Okay. Kind of hit every number I would expect it to with a disappointing spin number in that that's the kind of disappointing spin number I always get from these irons. So I've not achieved anything better there. Let's try another ball, see what we can do any better. Oh, a nice strike hand. Hitting the ball okay, let's see what that ball does. Right, okay, so in terms of carry distance, very consistent, 166 yards. Um, spin slightly up at 4,000 revs. Launch angle again, very consistent, 23.8 degrees. You'll see very steep descent angles on both peak heights of 35, 37 yards respectively. Has that club done anything different than I would have expected it to do? The answer is probably not. Not that there's a negative there, it's just done everything that I would expect from this iron. And what I said before I hit it was high launching ball, quite a low spinning uh, iron, which probably a disappointing number. And I'll talk about the sound and feel at the end of all this. I'm gonna switch up into a five iron before we finish up in the short end of the bag and have a look how we find the nine iron has become. Now this is interesting for me. I did a video earlier on in the year, which I said, do not pre-order G430 irons because when you're starting to get down to this end of the bag, lofts become extremely strong. And what I was suggesting was you may look at this sort of five iron, four iron at the ping I crossover alternatives because that performed incredibly well. So they're up against the ear to persuade me otherwise, but let's see how we get on with this five iron of the G430. Well, more than that, I mean, I cannot believe one thing that's changed massively over the last few years is just its launch angle because the way these clubs launch a ball nowadays is absolutely nothing like what you'd expect to see from a five iron. So I'm expecting a high launch angle. Um, well, high-ish, not what I was expecting really, 17.3 degrees, um, a 187 carry, that's a long ball, but again, quite relative and strong, strongly lofted club. Three and a half thousand revs of spin, not that different from that of what I achieved with the uh, which the seven iron, which was interesting. Um, so again, slightly worrying in terms of that spin. We are hitting off a mat as well, which can have a negative impact in terms of that spin number. Right, let's try one more. A solid ball. These things are traveling a distance, there is no doubt about that. I mean, they're firing out there. This thing is hot in terms of ball speeds. 19.3 um, launch, a oh, 2624 spin, a 178 carry. Again, I will go on, I know I was gonna go on to hit another ball, but I think straight away, it's that same thing. What do these irons do? Will they get the ball up? They get the ball out there? But there is that lack in finesse and control in spin. And this is where going back to what I said about do not order these or pre-order these because from my, well not from memory, my ping I crossover four iron was producing some numbers in around that 180 carry with a far greater spin number. So it always begs the question, where was the trade-off? What did they do in the ping I crossover that they weren't able to achieve in the ping G430 long iron? Because without doubt, in the longer iron, I would definitely say the I crossover performed better. Now, one other thing I really like about what Ping have done in this lineup of the G430s is they've recognized that with that stronger loft, and I think it's the pitching wedge that finishes the set at 41 degrees, that's strong. So they realize that they've got to introduce some wedges into the game that perhaps fill that void at that end of the bag, and that's exactly what they've done. They've introduced four different wedges with gapping that sits perfectly after that pitching wedge. They all look superb and fit seamlessly, obviously, into your G430 lineup, which again, I think is a major move from Ping. I applaud it, and they've recognized that kind of situation, 
and they've come up with a solution. Well done, Ping. Right, into the 9-9. Um, same thing, we'll hit a couple of shots. I, I mean, what's interesting for me is when you get down the short end of the bag, I do think it's become a little bit more compact. It's quite an appealing game improvement short iron. Um, so again, let's see what this thing does. Let's just hit some balls where you can analyze data very shortly. Oh, nice. I mean, maybe this is the moment that we discuss the kind of sound and feel, and I don't know how much you're picking up. It's funny because I would say that the longer iron has got a more harsh sound than the shorter iron. Now, that arguably could be with the fact that maybe there's some off-center hits going on with the five iron, and that nine iron that I just hit was out the center. Would that change the acoustics? I'm not so sure, but it definitely feels softer in the nine iron than it did in the five. Overall, my opinion on sound and feel was that yes, they've made some noticeable improvements without them being a leap forward in terms of are they the best feeling irons I've ever hit? The answer would still be no. Uh, 27 launch, 129 carry, 5-1 spin. The one thing that's noticeable in all of this is that spin number is the one that you would be really concerned with, and that's the compromise that's being made somewhere along the line. Let's hit another ball and see if we can get oh, a really nice iron, to be fair. And let's see what that does. The sound in these and the feel in the nine iron, I'm really quite enjoying. Um, okay, so high launching ball, 29 degrees. 6.3 spin, a bit more respectable, a 128 carry. So again, a kind of number that, not overly long to be quite honest with you, it's quite an easy swing, so at 128 yards, um, probably a little bit shorter than I would have expected it to have been to be quite honest with you. Um, but the sound and feel, like I said, more of a noticeable improvement down that short end of the bag. But overall, what would be my evaluation? Well, we started this video by suggesting that the Ping G430 irons will be the best-selling iron of uh, 2023. I still think that that's probably going to be the case, even though from my own perspective, they're not one that I would necessarily put on my list. For the reasons being that sound and feel are majorly important to me, as is the profile of a golf club. That's not to say that that's something that will put you off, and that's why a review is always very subjective when they're the things that you're being negative about. But there's also that negativity about the performance in terms of spin. It's something that I've struggled with with all the previous models um, from this G lineup in that they get the ball um, up and out there, as I always use in terms of a phrase, launch the ball very well, travel a great deal of distance, and clearly generate some good ball speeds. But there's a compromise, and that compromise is spin and perhaps control. And that's something that would straight away, if you looked at that set of numbers and compared it to other irons that I've tested for me personally, then they wouldn't be something that I would be looking at from a performance parameter. But you, on the other hand, might need the help and assistance with the launch and be able to make a compromise in terms of that spin number to the gains that you're going to make in terms of yardage traveled and launch angles. So always consider those things when you hear a review from anybody really, is that often the review can only be from the uh, perspective of the individual. In other words, I can only give my opinion based on my performance, but these aren't necessarily what I am looking for right now in my game. However, they are a real, real decent set of irons that will appeal to the masses, like I've said, in terms of visually and in terms of forgiveness and ultimately, most performance parameters. Right, that's me done. We're making these short and sweet because I'll get these out on the course and we'll do some further testing as the years go on, but that's all you really need right now in terms of uh, some basic information. And you know the important bit now, you go out and try them yourself and uh, either agree with what I found or you may find totally different, but either way, your opinion is the only one that matters. Right, as ever, thank you for watching. As I keep saying in these videos, I'll no doubt see you tomorrow night because we've got an absolute ruck of stuff going on right now. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you soon.